Hello and welcome back. Just picking some beans that we want for this evening. The extreme heat wave that we've been experiencing here in the UK um, and you know we have really really quite hot temperatures here for us um, not for other people that's situated in different parts of the world but for us here in the UK it's really really hot. Temperature today has actually reached 33 degrees um, and we're forecast as the weekend approaches that we will see temperatures 35, 36 degrees. So although it's not going to get quite as hot as it did in the first heat wave, where we saw temperatures of 39, 40 and 41 degrees, this particular heat wave is lasting longer. So it's been like this for some time now, hovering around these temperatures. And there's not really any break in the weather until next week. And there's still no real rain in the forecast. Now I saw a picture earlier today, it was a satellite picture taken of the UK. Uh, and it's really noticeable that on the western side of the country, it still has a lovely piece of green on it, which is what we'd expect the UK to look like. But as you move further over, and don't forget we live in the county of Norfolk, uh, in between the city of Norwich and the coastal town of Great Yarmouth. And all around there, and East Anglia, and down that sort of southeast side is just yellow. And this can be clearly seen on the picture that I was looking at this morning. And you're thinking, yeah, certain parts of the country really do have some real challenges. What can I say to people you know, regarding this heat wave, what can be done? Well, probably the first thing that people think about is watering. And you need to be really sensible with your watering. It really doesn't do the plants any good at all to come out here, you know, every day and just give them a little bit of water and then come out the next day and give them a little bit more. For starters, water, it really is a really precious commodity. Indeed, on our news today, um, we've been declared a drought and so I can assure you that by Monday morning when I listen to Radio Norfolk the water company will be on there saying that we can't use hoses anymore. So that's coming. So really you need to get really smart with your watering and what we try to do is we try to water things every two to three days on the plants that are established but we give them a good watering. I prefer to water earlier in the day than later in the day. Then of course there's things like harvesting. Now you saw me harvesting some of our vegetables at the beginning of the video and you know the more there is on your plants the more energies and water it wants to make these the size that we want them to be. So when things are of a good size to harvest it's a good idea to harvest things because then, as I say, it's not trying to send more water up there to keep all these going and it can get it to the most important places, you know, like here where the flowers are and it can start producing some more beans. And the last thing I'd say about watering is transplanting. You know, we're at a time of the year when we want to succession plant and normally for myself and Mrs W what we'd do is we would put, pop the transplant in after dipping the hole and give it a good drink of water to welcome it into its new home. And then I'd leave it for the next six or seven days before I then gave it another good watering. Principally because I want those roots to go down in search of the water that is in the ground. But at this time of the year, that could be quite deadly. So when, at the moment, as we're transplanting things into the ground, yes, we're giving them that good watering in, but then we're going back there every other day for the first week or two of its life and giving it some more water. The last thing you want is for those to keel over. So that's my other piece of advice when it comes to watering. I honestly think that being new dig has really helped. I mean, I can see everything is still of a good color green which would say to me that uh, these plants are getting the moisture that they need. They're not yellow and falling over and looking as though they're going to die. 
And when you consider, we haven't seen any significant rainfall here for the last six to eight weeks. Yeah, a couple of three weeks back um, after the first heat wave passed and there was a breakdown in the weather, a few storms about, and we got a little bit of rain overnight, but that was it. Hardly enough really to make a huge difference. But because everything has our compost over it, the rain that we had back end of last year and earlier this year, that's been locked down there because it's not evaporating up into the sky. And indeed, any moisture that we get, it's not being lost and being evaporated straight back up. It's being sucked up by the compost and then it can trickle down into our soil. Which brings me to the next thing, and that's regardless whether you're a new dig or not, if you've got compost, and hopefully you're making your own compost, we certainly do, at this time of the year, mulch. Mulch around things. Because then all that precious water that you've actually put into the ground, that will be locked in. There are always some winners and some losers within any garden. And one thing that has been a real good success with these really warm temperatures that we've had is the things in the greenhouse. So I've got to go into there and do some harvesting and we'll see what we've got there. We only harvested some tomatoes about three days ago um, and this truck was absolutely full of them, absolutely full of them. So we've come back three days later and we've got more to harvest. You can see these ones more or less are the sort of colour that you want and really red. But again, when it comes to harvesting, we said outside earlier, you know, harvest things, you don't need to wait until they've gone completely red. Yes, it will do that on the plant, but it's going to stress the plant. There's a lot of tomatoes on this plant and this will continue ripening when we get it indoors and it won't be long before it gets to its normal red colour. And then once this really extreme heat then passes, we can leave them on the plant even when they're like this and they'll continue, they'll go back to behaving the way that you would expect them to um, and to really ripen those up. But there are, there's lots of fruits on tomatoes and you know, it'll just stress the plants. This what you see here, this is a very normal thing for the plant to do is because it is warm. And by curling its leaves up like that, it's conserving its energy and the water reserves that's in there. And this is due for a watering when we're finished filming this. What I wanted to do is just show you that. So if you've seen that on your plants, like that plant is not about to keel over and die. Not by any means. It's a natural reaction that they make and once it's had a good drink of water it will go back to how you would normally expect to see the plant. I have heard some people say that when the leaves go like this that it's absolutely terminal, it will never recover. Well let me tell you it's been doing this for the last eight weeks in this greenhouse or more and uh, this plant is still here so don't let yourself be too frightened into thinking the fact that, you know, just because it's done this, it's about to keel over and die. If you hadn't watered for the last eight weeks and it's gone yellow and it's, yeah, you, you can tell when a plant is absolutely on its last legs and these plants are nothing like it. It's doing a natural thing that it would naturally do to help itself through these really hot times. And then while we're in here, we'll just take a quick look at our chilies. And you can see we've got plenty of chilies that are coming. There's several plants in here and they've all got seven or eight chilies on them. Ours have not turned yet, they're still green, so they've not gone their normal red colour. And we probably won't see that here until we get into next month. But do let us know how you're getting on with your chilies, because I know that a lot of you, you grew your aubergines and your chilies and your peppers um, and tomatoes, you grew them along with us. And I know that by the comments that you've left us, so um, do let us know how you're getting on. Now you may remember that in uh, a couple of three videos back, it may have been the garden tour, I can't remember exactly now, but anyway, we sort of said to you, we've had something going on here whereby we think it's red spider mite. And you can see by these leaves here, this is what we were seeing. But what we have been doing is uh, ensuring that these plants are really getting, you know, water and not letting them dry out between uh, waterings, uh, something that 
Brian in a comment said to me that this particular pest thrives in really dry and arid conditions. And actually it's working. Look, we've got new leaves and they're looking lovely and lush. You see that I've been round and had a harvest too of some aubergines that were ready to come off. But actually, since these new leaves have appeared, look, we have fresh flowers that are forming. So I'm hopeful for another harvest flush. And that's happening to each and every plant. We can see new flowers actually now appearing on them. So absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really over the moon with that. And really surprisingly, and it's a lovely surprise, not only is it the aubergines, but the cucumbers come back to life. This cucumber had leaves that every leaf was like this. And we'd already had a really good harvest of cucumbers from it. And we were really pleased with that. We thought, oh, well, we're just going to have to go with the one in the polytunnel, which, which doesn't appear to have suffered so much. Um, but then lo and behold, this has sprung into life. We've got flowers, indeed cucumbers that are now starting to form. And these leaves, lovely and fresh. In fact, you can probably see on the stem up here, this is what the leaves are actually like. Really rough, a white colour. And, you know, that probably is due to the really hot weather that we've had. Probably haven't given it enough water. Um, but yeah, they've all come back. How good is that? And just before we just come out of this glass house, because believe you me, it's really quite warm in here. <laughs> um, what we have done for the first time ever, we've put this shading up here, as you can see, just to stop the worst of the sun really hitting and warming up this greenhouse. That's really started to work. And the other thing is, is that when it comes to watering, what I often do as well as watering the plants, you can see that we try to send the water right down to the root zones by using these plastic containers. Yep, that's really good and it's worked and it's worked well. These plants look really healthy. But also what I'll do is, at the hottest times of the day, we'll get the hose and just actually really soak the path and make that wet and the glass and it really helps to cool the greenhouse down and it's a trick that i picked up some years ago and i've done it ever since and you know you can really notice the difference once you've done that you walk back into the glass house and you know it does feel an awful lot cooler and of course it goes without saying <laughs> make sure any ventilation ports that are anywhere within the glass house at this time of the year make sure they're fully open and leave them open <laughs> if i had another door that into the greenhouse that would be open too here we are in this part of our garden which is in lovely shade uh, normally we do it on the bench but that's still in really full sun or under the bean arch but that's still all in full sun and it's just far too hot to be there which leads me on to my last point about the garden heat wave most importantly look after yourselves Try where you can to get out in the early hours of the morning when it's not at its hottest. Try not to garden between sort of 12 and 3 in the afternoon. There's lots that can be done with all of this harvest. Yeah, it's lovely to eat it fresh and where we can, we do try to eat it fresh. But at this time of the year, we talked about the greenhouse, that's done really well. Probably the best harvest of tomatoes we've had in quite a few years because they like these conditions and right you can get moisture to them get water to them they love the really hot conditions same with the aubergines but there's rather a lot of them so what are you going to do with them what we can eat fresh we will and what we can't we will put into some kind of storage so when it comes to things like runner beans and french beans these can be topped and tailed and cut to the desired length 
They can be blanched and then frozen. And the lovely thing about that is because I love these at this time of the year. And, uh, you know, a, a side dish of these with my evening meal really brightens my day. They're a summer crop. But if you've frozen those, okay, they might not be at their absolute best, but beans do really freeze well. You can enjoy the taste of summer in December when you take these out of the freezer and just pop them into a pan of boiling water just to cook them through. And you've got, it instantly reminds you of the taste of summer and what you are eating at this time of year in mid-August. And then we come to here on this chair here. Now, Mrs. W, she's really good at doing things like preserves. And all the way through the year, you know, yes, as I said before, we love to eat things lovely and fresh, but you also have to understand that you can't eat everything fresh and it starts to go over and past its best. So if you can preserve its wireless at its best, happy days. And just like we were talking about with the runner beans, you know, a taste of summer, you know, raspberries, this is some seedless raspberry jam that Mrs. W has made. Um, you can be enjoying the taste of those raspberries long after I've cut those plants down and waiting for the fruit for next year. Here's some strawberry jam that she made earlier this year. We didn't actually get quite so much of strawberry jam this year because the grandchildren absolutely adore strawberries. It's actually difficult for us to find some strawberries to use because they will have eaten quite a lot. When the plum tree had some plums, some plum jam that Mrs. W has made. But it's not just jams. This here, this is a raspberry vinegar that Mrs. W made. And it's really good as a salad dressing. And it really does have a lovely sweetness of the raspberry, the fruit. But then that's offset by the bitterness of the vinegar and is really lovely as a salad dressing. Remember the red currants that you saw in our videos earlier on in the year? Well, with those red currants, Mrs. W has made some lovely cordial. Now the grandchildren love this with some fizzy water. Absolutely love it. Mrs. W, by the way, she loves it with some fizz. And also with the red currants, you've often heard me say about the red currant jelly. And this is something that's really prized in the family. Everybody likes Mrs. W's red currant jelly. And it's really great, you know, if when you're doing your roasts or casseroles, you know, and you've got the savouriness of the gravies, a spoonful of this, and it just helps to sweeten that up a little bit. And we also use it when we cook a ham. Um, we mix some of this with some mustard and then brush it over the ham and use that as a glaze, which is really, really lovely. And when all the family are around for Christmas, we do that exact thing and everybody loves to pile around here to have a nice chunk of that ham with Mrs. W's famous red currant jelly and mustard glaze. The other thing is, as we've been in and out of the polytunnel and the greenhouse, uh, you'll know that we've been growing some cucumelons. Now, cucumelons are a member of the cucumber family, only they have a bit of a citrus kick to them as well, which makes them just that little bit different. And we've decided this year to pickle some, so they'll be preserved. Um, I'm looking forward to tasting those a little bit later on in the year and see exactly what they're like. She's actually put some dill tops in there where it's flowered and then you can see its seeds just to help flavour that and give that another extra layer of flavour. By the way, I may or may not have mentioned this before, but cucumelons are really good in the gin, gin and tonic because they do have that slight citrus kick to them. The other thing with these is that uh, they're very often added to the pickles that Mrs W makes. Um, and when you come to eat them, they retain their crunch. So they put that bit of crunch into the pickles. So there's many ways in which you can use 
the cucumelons. And then the tomatoes, we looked at the tomatoes earlier. Here's a couple of examples of things that Mrs W has made. So we've got some tomato and onion chutney. And then in this hand, just a simple plain red tomato chutney. You know, and they go really well at any time of the year. If you want some crackers and cheese and a bit of this on the side, goes really lovely. Going back to the hams, where it's had that lovely mustard and red currant jelly glaze. You know, a couple of slices of that on a plate and then this pickle. Oh, absolutely amazing. And again, you know, you can, you've captured all the taste of summer just in this jar with these tomatoes. And, you know, there's no end of things that you can use. Uh, you know, Mrs. W will be, because we are starting to get a bit of a glut of runner beans and French beans, and she'll make pickles with those. Which leads me to the last thing that I just wanted to say. Now, I'm very often asked in the comments below uh, about what can you do with gluts, what can you do with things, and, you know, we've shown you a few examples today without going into great detail, but we've shown you a few examples. And we were sort of talking about it between ourselves and thinking uh, maybe it's not a bad idea, actually, if we actually show people exactly what we do to preserve these things. Uh, Mrs. W has her own particular recipes and the way she does them um, and the ingredients that she uses. And, you know, the ingredients, they do come out of the garden other than the vinegar. <laughs> but they do come out of the garden. Um, so do let us know in the comments below if you would like to see more things like that about how we are preserving things um, and how we go about it because we're more than happy to uh, make a series of videos on that um, and just by letting me know in the comments if there's something you'd like to see will give us an idea and we can gauge whether that's something that uh, you know our audience would like to see um, I'm pretty sure you would why wouldn't you really it's a lovely way to to preserve your food. Now, for me personally, it's just a quick apology really for uh, the lack of any videos over the last seven days. Um, as you know, the last video we released that was made right on top of my birthday. And again, a real big thanks to you all. Um, I received so many birthday wishes <laughs> uh, over the comments and over the rest of our social media absolutely overwhelmed by it all and yes I did have an absolutely superb weekend it started on the Friday which was when my birthday was Friday the 5th and it didn't finish until the Monday we did various things over the days different uh, factions of the family were coming around um, and yeah just had a really super super time and of course I worked full-time during the week Mrs W also works too, so most of our filming is done at the weekends and we obviously lost that weekend so there was not really much in the bank to be able to put out this week. But everything's back to normal now and you just start seeing a regular supply once again of a couple of videos every week that we put out there. So as I said earlier, do let us know in the comments below how is your garden going? How is it coping within the heat wave? There may be tips and tricks that you use in order to see your vegetables through to their harvest. And they may be different from what I've actually spoken about on video. So do let us know in the comments because it helps us all out, not just me, but everybody else. You know, there are 907 subscribers to this channel at this moment in time, and they all, I know, read the comments and everybody's got a piece of help from things that you've all put down there in the comments because they tell me that they get so much from it and we shall see you next time